To experience for herself the early diving gear James would have worn, Sarah is meeting Gary Wallace Potter and Peter Wingate from the Historical Diving Society. Hello. Hiya. Hello, I'm Hello. Peter. Nice to meet you, Peter. I'm Sarah. Hello. This is Gary. I'm Gary. Nice to meet you, Gary. Thank you. It's very exciting. Wow. Oh, my God. Would you actually like to try a suit on? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, we can do that. OK. OK. So, what um... What size is it? <laughs> one size fits all. Really? Yes. I've, I've been in that situation yeah, before, no, you know. Yeah, one size fits all. <laughs> We've got a couple of shoe horns. <laughs> oh, my God. What we're going to do is put a talc on the seals. It makes it easier to get in and out. OK. I'm more worried about these at the front, to be all honest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing is we're going to put the breastplate on. We tighten this right down, and this is to make sure that you don't get wet. Now it's the helmet. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> OK. The open bucket type of helmet that James started diving in was superseded in the 1840s by a helmet which was closed and watertight. That's it. Come in. Right. There you go. Wow, that is heavy. James could now move more freely underwater to salvage. Air was pumped to his helmet, keeping him alive, but was also trapped in his suit, making him buoyant. The only way James could stay underwater was to carry a huge amount of weight. Do you actually want to try the full weight? Yeah. Yeah? Totally. Right. So, bring your hands up. Yeah, yeah. All right. How much do these weigh? They're... 40 pounds or what's that about 18 kilos each so you've got one on the front one on the back the boots had a lead sole to counteract the buoyancy mm, right. if he lost his boots it could be talking about a diver being inverted oh my god it's as horrific, well isn't it? yeah wow there we are torn. right okay wow okay that is heavy can't believe i said yes to this all right right well, here we go then here we go go yep both we've got that's nine and a half stone on your shoulders and then another two and a half stone on your feet. Really? <laughs> then you'd have to climb down the ladder over the side of the boat. Could do a ladder after all? Yeah, after all down the this. ladder into the water. Yes. But then, of course, the worst bit is face plate. Face plate in now. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's get her out. Yeah. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. Helmet coming off. All right. Yep. Oh. There you go. Wow. It's amazing to think that this is what James Hawke did. You know, this is this was something he ate probably every day. Do you think? That's right. I am impressed right. with James Holt. The Whitstable divers, like James, earned a reputation for their risk-taking and specialist salvage skills. Insurance companies like Lloyd's hired these daredevils to recover valuable cargo from ships which had sunk. James would earn a percentage of the value of the recovered goods. Do we know what sort of jobs uh, James might have worked on? Well, I have got a reference mm. from our Divers Index. OK. OK. There he is. Yeah, there's James Holt. James Holt. Now, the first conclusive reference we have to him is in 1843 and it's referring to Holt working on the wreck of the Pegasus in Holy Island. So, in order to find more out about the Pegasus, I suppose I should go to Holy Island. Holy Island. Yeah, I think so. That's very exciting. James set off for Holy Island in 1843. This time, he'd be diving in unfamiliar waters. But if the Pegasus was a valuable wreck, for a bounty-hunting salvager like James, it could be a windfall. <laughs> 